Before we get started, here's a quick message from our sponsor. Atlas VPN is a service that provides users with online privacy, giving you your own virtual private network by using encryption to protect your personal data from being viewed by the wrong eyes. Atlas VPN has a dedicated system to combat malware and malicious ads on your devices and is compatible with most operating systems such as Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. It also features a data breach monitor which notifies users of any leaked information being exposed from your online accounts such as your usernames, emails, and passwords. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a massive discount and by using our link, get Atlas VPN slash Kendo Gun Shop, you can gain access to a three-year premium subscription plan at 82% off for only $1.99 a month. And if you aren't satisfied with their service, users will be eligible for a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're interested, make sure to check the description and pinned comment. All the information has been linked down below. Now, let's get started. Welcome back, Joseph Kendo here. Within the puzzling halls of the Spencer Mansion, an uncertain death resides around each and every corner, from both its lingering inhabitants and the sinister design built within its corridors. However, one measure of defense was kept on property, an old hunting shotgun that was put on display for protective use, but only if you could successfully retrieve it from its trap. Today on the gun bench, we have the mansion shotgun, the vintage sporting shotgun with an integral role in the very construction of the Spencer Mansion whose known origins trace back before the birth of Umbrella. Now that we have it in our hands, let's take a look into its forgotten backstory and discuss some of the untold secrets behind one of Resident Evil's most impactful weapons. The origins of the Spencer Mansion date back to 1962, which was said to have been built as a private residence for the prestigious aristocrat, Dr. Oswell E. Spencer, as one of the three founding fathers of the Umbrella Corporation. In its construction, the mansion was designed by the renowned American architect, George Trevor, who was famously known for his design ingenuity alongside unconventional gimmicks such as hidden rooms and labyrinth floor plans. But unknown to Trevor, this mansion was planned to serve as a company retreat for both the lodging and recreation of employees at Umbrella Pharmaceuticals, and furthermore, as a front for one of their research facilities. As such, Trevor's particular set of skills were put to use, as the mansion was built to house a selection of intricate traps and elaborate locking mechanisms, which were intended to dispose of the estate's unwelcome visitors. One of these traps was designed in the marble room on the east wing of the mansion. Within this chamber, the surfaces of its walls were decorated with the portrayal of a 17th century hunting scene, along with an ornate ceiling fresco, which suspiciously donned the guest's view from above. But behind the other door, guests were greeted to the drawing room, which held an elegant hunting shotgun displayed within a framed wood relief. As an avid art collector and hunting enthusiast, this shotgun belonged to Lord Spencer himself, which was kept on display as a piece of his own private collection and for the defense of Umbrella's visiting researchers and staff. When the shotgun is removed from its mount, the weight released activates an archaic trap in which the wielder of the shotgun is met by a locked door once they've reached the preceding room and are now unable to leave as the room's ceiling begins to collapse, forcibly crushing the entrapped victim inside. <laughs> Following the completion of the mansion in 1967, Trevor's notes revealed one such case where a researcher did in fact try to retrieve the shotgun for himself, but had ultimately been caught inside the insidious trap, in which both his body and the shotgun were compressed into a dismembered state. As a result, Lord Spencer ordered to have evidence of the scene swept thoroughly clean. It's unknown what became of the victim's body, although it's been rumored that the shotgun was broken beyond repair. It's said that remnants of the shotgun were kept on property, but they had been stashed away to stay hidden from view, where it would long remain in the shadows to rust with years to come. The Spencer Mansion shotgun had its first appearance in the original Resident Evil, released in 1996. With the arrival of stars at the Spencer Mansion, members of Alpha Team were soon to discover the unforeseen threats dwelling within the different regions of the mansion. But upon exploration, players will come across a shotgun mounted to the wall of the drawing room, and if players decide to take it for themselves, they will quickly recognize this discovery is too good to be true once they've left the room. However, 
There is a trick to successfully retrieve this shotgun if you can do so by deactivating the trap. If you've managed to unlock the storeroom on the west wing, you can discover a second shotgun placed inside. Although once obtained, this weapon cannot be equipped as it's given the name Broken Shotgun and its description reads, it's too dangerous to fire. Does it have another use? And by tailing this clue back to the drawing room, this model appears to be a replicated design as it can be used to replace the shotgun in the mount which deactivates the trap and enables the player to escape scot-free. Although, if you start the game as Jill and have made your way to the drawing room right after obtaining the lockpick from Barry, you can successfully retrieve the shotgun without ever having to obtain the broken model, in which the events of the trapped room will now play out differently. Hey, what's going on? Jill? Is that you, Jill? What happened? Barry? Help me, please. The door won't open. Quick! Stay away from the door, Jill. I'm gonna kick this door down. Hurry! This way! Oh, Barry! That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life. Once obtained, this shotgun is now yours to keep, and upon examination, its description reads, Remington Model 870, a pump-action shotgun. But aside from this, there is a bit more that can be told outside of its appearance in-game. The shotgun obtained from the Spencer Mansion is presented as the Remington Model 870, which is recognized as one of the most popular shotguns in the world from its common use among civilians and law enforcement alike. Prior to the events of the mansion incident, the officers of STARS had been adequately trained with shotguns and were capable of handling them in different scenarios with proficient use. But with the reliance on handguns, Chris and Jill were under-equipped to face the aggregation of zombies with 9mm alone. Thus, the appearance of the mansion shotgun served as a saving grace to each of our protagonists by giving them the proper leverage to overcome their fears and survive. Once equipped, the shotgun is aimed from the hip and is loaded with a capacity of seven shells. At medium range, it can quickly take down a zombie with about two shots, with the spread of its pellets having the ability to hit multiple enemies at once, which gives players an advantage to clear out a group of zombies. Although it's best advised to use the shotgun at close range as it deals the most damage when fired at point blank. In addition, if you aim the barrel upward and pull the trigger with the right timing, it's capable of blasting the heads off zombies with a single shot, as well as the legs if you point the barrel downward. Outside of this, the shotgun is still considered the most versatile weapon in the game, given its ability to halt any enemy within its tracks and a stopping power that can take down some of the deadlier foes with ease. Several years following the debut of the series, the Mansion Shotgun returned for its 2002 appearance in the Resident Evil remake, in this retelling, the shotgun is obtained in the same fashion as the original game, where it's once again found inside the drawing room. As such, when the shotgun is taken from its mount, players will be caught by the imminent danger of the ceiling trap, and will be urged to return it without further consideration. Later on, when players have made their way to the storeroom on the west wing, the broken shotgun will be obtained by searching inside the old clock. Upon examination, its description reads, it's broken and can't be fired. Maybe there's another use for this. And by taking this twin back to the drawing room, it can be switched with a shotgun in the mount, allowing players to escape with their new weapon in hand. But just like the original game, if you're playing as Jill and have attempted to take the shotgun early on, players will be met with a fortunate visit from Barry Burton. Wesker! Barry! Help! Jill! You in there? The door's jammed! Stand back! <clears throat> Grab my hand! <clears throat> Barry! That was a close one. A second late, you would have fit nicely into a sandwich. And once obtained, the shotgun serves as an additional weapon to the player's arsenal and upon examination, its description reads, fires 12-gauge shells, 
a weapon that is capable of firing wide range. But aside from this, you can recognize that it has been remodeled to depict a shotgun with an entirely different design. This version of the Mansion shotgun shares a similar appearance to the design from the original game, although this time around, it's presented as one of the iconic arms from the World Wars, known as the Winchester Model 1897, as opposed to the previous Remington 870. And aside from this model change, it's presented with a custom design, as shown by a set of unique features. To start, it features a set of custom-fit rifle sights that are fixed on both the front and rear of the barrel, along with having a magazine tube that's been extended to carry a capacity of six shells. When looking at its wood furniture, it retains the fore end of the Remington 870, which serves as a bit of a callback to the shotgun's original 1996 design. Nonetheless, the stock does appear faithful to the Model 1897, aside from the addition of a rubberized butt pad placed on the back end. But perhaps the most distinguishing trait of this design comes from its decorated receiver, as it features a set of side plates riveted onto the surfaces of the gun, each of which lend to its overall two-tone appearance. By taking a closer look, we can catch a better glimpse of the engravings detailed within its design, which features elegant scroll work and a set of scripted banners mirrored onto both of its sides. Apart from this, the engravings present two other figures that have been inlaid in gold, which accent the matching plated trigger underneath. It's still unknown what exactly the two figures are meant to symbolize, although it appears that the one on the left depicts a flock of birds, while the one on the right depicts the head of a deer. While these observations aren't to be taken as certain, both the imagery and overall design share a well-reflected hunting theme, which appropriately ties into the shotgun's surrounding backstory. In use, this shotgun performs with a set of familiar traits, being once again aimed from the hip and firing a wide blast radius. In turn, this has been shown to be quite effective when hunting the avian enemies, and this grants the ability to knock back multiple foes, which will defeat zombies with around two to three shots. But most importantly, the shotgun is able to perform the classic headshot technique, which can be used to decapitate zombies swiftly with one well-aimed shot, as well as the ability to sever the legs, both of which prevent the rebirth of zombies from their V-Act transformation. Regardless of your fate, if you've forgotten to burn the remaining corpses with kerosene, this shotgun will serve as your best defense to combat the rise of crimson heads in the earlier segments of the game. For these reasons, it's best to save your ammo when outnumbered in the game's ambush scenarios, or when facing off against the Crimson Elder in your very first boss encounter. While there was little reason to remember its original design, the Mansion Shotgun has become one of the most notorious weapons in the Resident Evil franchise, owing its integral role in George Trevor's most unforgiving trap, along with its position in survival from the devastating effects it posed to enemies. However, with the revisions that were made in the remake, its design was finally given the proper treatment it deserved by presenting it as a high-end hunting shotgun that was well characterized to fit within the mansion's antique setting among the other possessions of Oswell E. Spencer. As it stands, the legacy of the mansion shotgun has forever left its mark on the series by setting a tradition for numerous entries to present their shotguns in an all-too-familiar fashion and inspiring other spiritual successors to have forbidden weapons that have been entrapped from the player's reach to both celebrate and evoke a sense of deja vu of an iconic moment that has been retold time and time again. So, that's it for the Mansion Shotgun, the vintage hunting shotgun of Oswell E. Spencer's personal collection, with a history stained with the blood of its enemies and all who wish to wield it. Be sure to check out our Kendo Gun Shop merchandise. Our first two shirt and sticker designs are now available. You can find the link to the shop down below. If you'd like to help the Kendo Gun Shop expand its business past Raccoon City, share the video with your friends to help spread the word, or feel free to leave us a tip over at our Patreon, link in the description. Make sure to leave us a comment on what guns from the series you'd like to see a video on next, and don't forget to come back and visit us at the Gun Shop for more content about the firearms of Resident Evil.